What's up YouTube? Today we are looking at the brand new granular engine in Faceplant. So this might come as a surprise to a lot of you because in a previous video I actually mentioned the fact that you don't we didn't necessarily need a granular engine because the sampler engine in Faceplant was so advanced. And then the folks over at Kilohertz just go ahead and knock it straight out of the park. Not only did they make a granular engine that's far better than I could have ever imagined. And they've also added some features to the sampler engine, which makes it so much better. So in today's video, we're gonna dive into some of the new features in Kilohertz version 2.1. Let's dive in and have a look. So the first thing I want to do is I want to talk through a bunch of the parameters, how the granular engine works and what all of these functions do. Then we can have some fun and just make some granular sounds after that. Once we understand the inner workings of this module. So let's go ahead and create a blank instance of face plant over here. And then we want to add the granular generator. So essentially how it works is it's kind of similar to the sampler in that you can load a sample over here and then you can see it kind of displayed in this main window over here. The difference, however, is to create grain envelopes. Previously, you had to do a bunch of really tricky modulation. Now in the granular engine, it's kind of the grain envelope is kind of built in. Not only does this make it so much easier because you don't have to do all that tricky routing. It's just kind of click and play, but it just adds extra features that weren't actually available with the whole tricky routing system some of which are the fact that you can tempo sync your grains, you can quantize them to particular scales and chords. It's incredible what you can do. So anyway, without getting too far ahead of ourselves, let's just go ahead and load a very simple sample. So of course, like with almost all of the things that Kilohertz add, there's a ton of content built in, like samples that are specific to the granular engine. So here, for example, we have uh, vocal, we have vocals, we have phrases, this one is particularly interesting because these phrases are essentially loops. And the cool thing about this is, you know, without thinking too much about the chords and stuff like that, we can just create grains that are capturing different parts of the loop and maybe creating these different melodies and stuff from the loop. So we're gonna get into that a little bit further. What I wanna do is I just wanna create something very simple. So let's just find a very simple sound. So for this, what I want to do is I actually just want to go into the piano section that was from, that was always in phase plant and we can just load up a piano sample over here. This is going to be a little bit easier for us to tell exactly what's going on. So when we trigger a sound, you'll notice that it loops very quickly. So this loop size is determined by the grain envelope over here. So essentially we can create a larger grain, a smaller grain, or we can modulate this for various different interesting effects. We have a the ability to sync the grains. So what this does is then it'll sync that looped piece of grain, which is, this is pretty cool for rhythmic percussive kind of things. So you notice when it's in sync mode, the grain envelope size doesn't adjust how quickly it loops, but I actually like this density mode because this kind of creates this really almost organic motion when you modulate this because the grain speed, like the speed of the retrigger is determined by the size of the grain envelope. So you can do some really interesting effects by adding, for example, like um, a different shape envelope here. So let's do a really tight envelope, like something like this. So, so this allows us to go right up into the really fine millisecond territory to get almost tonal retriggering. One thing I really appreciate about this, and it's something that kind of, it's, I guess, across the board with most of the kilohertz stuff, is it's incredibly simple, incredibly visual, but still quite advanced. So the amount of functions that are kind of packed into such a small interface that's very readable, it's very easy to understand, is actually astounding. Um, the fact that we can see the amplitude of each of the grains being represented in this little window over here. Watch this. You see the size of these little dots represents the kind of amplitude of the grain, which is really intuitive. We 
can also increase the density of the grains with this parameter over here. So bear in mind, all of these parameters are actually modulatable. So one thing that I like to do is to modulate the grains alongside the size of the envelopes. And what this allows you to do is create these kind of almost sounds like single, single percussive hits that can turn into these kind of like evolving morphing spectral clouds of ambient tones. Just check this out. So if we set up a macro to modulate the grain envelope size as well as the amount of grains, so the density. So it's a very nice way of being able to quickly morph from something pretty percussive and full of texture into something that's more of a pad, which is a really interesting technique. In my opinion, one of the best features in this granular, uh, in this granular system is the chords system. So what this is, is essentially like quantization of the pitch of each of the grains kind of built into the oscillator. So if we select, for example, octaves, each of the grains are only going to be represented by different octaves of the input signal. Same goes for minor, it'll do a minor chord based on the root note. So I like octaves because this kind of still allows us to play a melody in and it's just going to kind of sweep different octaves. We don't get locked into particular scales, if that makes sense. Um, and then the range determines how wide of a range of octaves it chooses from. We can choose different patterns. So this is essentially like arpeggiator patterns. This one random, obviously different octaves randomly. And then this one obviously sweeps up, sweeps down, up and then down. So let's play around a little bit with this. So now we've got this single grain just jumping between the octaves. Now watch what happens when we tweak this macro that we set up just now, which controls the size and the density of the grains. And so now if we set up some of these random modulators along the bottom, so what these do is each of these determines a random, for example, position that each of the grains will take when it is triggered. So notice how now these grains are kind of all over the place in terms of the position of the sample. Does that make sense? And so how it works is it's an amount of randomization. So for example, you have plus minus. For me, my personal favorites are to use a little bit of level control a lot of pan control and about 25% to halfway of reverse. So what this does is it basically, it'll say some of the grains, this percentage of grains, it will play in reverse. So it creates really interesting textures. It's sounding a little bit raw. So what I wanna do is just put in just a little bit of processing. So I've got this rack which I've set up which has a bit of shimmer, a bit of reverb, a bit of delay. And we can just mix that into taste. So then once I've got a really cool kind of setup that I've got going, what I'll do is I'll lock this parameter over here. So now what this does, this allows us to cycle through the samples, but it keeps all of these settings intact. So now that we've got a kind of setup that we like, we can kind of experiment with different sound sources. So this is where it gets really interesting because it's like one of those things where you can kind of throw anything at it and you get all these interesting results. 
So remember what I was saying earlier about the using phrases or loops. So what this now does is because we have these octaves, some of the grains are going to be sped up, some of them are going to be slowed down, and that kind of thing. So we can get this really interesting, almost polyrhythmic as well as melodic aspect going when we modulate uh, between the positions. So this will be different points at which it's going to grab chunks of audio in a loop. Is it just me or does that sound like all of those modular ambient YouTube dudes with the candles? <laughs> There's even some break samples that come in here, which you can get some really interesting textures by just granularizing them. Anyway, that's enough of that noise. 
So this is a quick patch that I made. And um, what I'll do is I'll upload this patch and the previous one that I said sounded like all those candle modular ambient dudes on YouTube. Um, I'll upload these two patches to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. So this is a similar idea. I guess I set it up in a very similar way to the previous patch. Um, I haven't actually given it some pan yet, random pans. So this does a very similar thing, but I just found the combination of these exact settings with this uh, sample, the glitter saw is just so fantastic. Check this out. So the next big new feature is the sample editor. So if you load up a sampler, what you can do is you can click edit now, which is I guess similar to the wavetable editor and it pops up a window. So the sampler editor is still a little bit basic. However, there's some pretty cool things in here. One for example is you can snap to samples. So for example, we can, we can line this up to exactly one sample. So we can know exactly how much of what sound we're cutting um, right up to the sample. Um, we can create sample accurate fade-ins, fade-outs uh, using this system over here, for example. Uh, let's say we wanna remove just this chunk of audio. We can create a little uh, fade peak like this. And then with this one, let's say just this sample of audio, let's zoom right in there. Just this sample of audio, we can create a a fade in like this, just so we don't get that kind of like click and stuff like that. So like I said, still a little bit basic. There aren't really any extra effects. There is remove DC, reverse, convert to stereo, convert to mono if the sample is stereo, normalize, etc. So these uh, operations work in sections. So we can, for example, mo normalize just this part or just this part, for example, or um, so here we've created a bit of DC, which we can remove here like this, for example. So we can get a little bit experimental and create our own sounds by just editing in samples. This is something that um, Cubase had, the ability to actually draw in stuff on a kind of sample level, to draw in your waveforms um, on a per sample level, which is something you don't see in many other tours. I think Reaper has, it, Reaper has it as well. So being able to do it within the sample editor of a synthesizer is really cool because most of the time that's where you would be using it. You know, you would draw in a weird shape that you would then resynthesize. Does that make sense? That's about it, folks. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think about the video. Like I said, I'm gonna be uploading some of these presets to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you wanna know what that's all about, check out the link in the description and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.